Nyanjo Milwaukee and welcome to our September edition of Nyanjo Milwaukee TV. I am Malia Zhang. The word Nyanjo means hello in the Hmong language. It is used to welcome or greet people. So Nyanjo and welcome again to our show. Today we will take you to La Crosse to visit the Hmong Cultural and Community Agency and introduce you to Na Hua Ya and Song Kye Li as they talk about the history and programs the Hmong Culture and Community Agency have to offer. In recognition of September being National Suicide Prevention Month, we will dedicate the majority of this show on mental health awareness. We will take you to our red carpet event in June and listen to Dr. Alyssa Gai Ying Ba talk about the state of mental health in our Hmong community. Not only that, we will also showcase our production of the film Save Me at the opening of the 2019 Minority Health Film Festival at the Oriental Theater. Along with these great stories, we will have important news within the Hmong community to announce and share with you pieces of our rich and colorful culture. La Crosse is the largest city on Wisconsin's western border. The city is positioned along the Mississippi River, which makes it one of the most beautiful cities, attracting many Hmong families to call La Crosse home. Today, we take you to meet some Hmong community members in La Crosse and visit the Hmong Culture and Community Agency. Let's go see what Na Hua Ya and Song Jie Li have to say about the beautiful city that they live in. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay. This agency is pretty much uh, membership driven. Right now, we, we have close to about uh, 2,000 uh, plus or so membership. And when I say members, they are basically memorials member, meaning that if someone in the family passes away, then they can use the facility, you know, at a discounted rate to uh, to hold funeral services for their family members. It's, uh, some of the services and programs that we have here, uh, we still have a small portion of our population that still need, you know, interpreting, uh, translations. We also need um, uh, elderly programs, cultural programs. And there are two components to the cultural programs. One is the monk traditional cultural practices training that we offer to any, anyone in the monk community to learn about monk tradition, culture, and practices. And then the other one is a Heng instrument uh, culture program that we have here to train people who want to learn how to play the Heng. Some educational program, like the monk educational project, which we offer every year in March to teach um, a lot of our local school districts students about Hmong history and Hmong culture and why the Hmong people came to America. Other than that, we also have like blacksmith shop for people to come in here and then they can uh, do, um, you know, or learn blacksmith skills. And so these are some of the services that we provide uh, for the community. Like, I think we need to maintain our culture so that we can pass on to our young generations. The Hmong culture is not only important for younger Hmong generation, but also to let other non-Hmong people in this community know that we are a people and we have our own cultures and we are very unique in our ways. That's why we have a Hmong community young flourish here. We have a share of the Hmong community. That's the key thing. This is what we have, this is what we built. To tell La Crosse is truly beautiful. Thank you to Na Hua Ya and Song Kye Li and all the Hmong community members for taking the time to showcase your community and welcoming Nyan Zhong Milwaukee TV. 
Stay with us. When we come back, we'll take you to listen to what Dr. Alyssa Gaiyingfa has to say about mental health in the Hmong community. Most things in life come with a price. And it's one that you're willing to pay. But you'd never say, it costs too little. Which is why we offer straightforward options for your everyday financial needs with better rates and lower fees. So you have more money for the things that really matter. Landmark Credit Union, you're worth more here. Welcome back. She's the first Hmong speaking licensed psychologist in Minnesota and runs her own private practice in the Twin Cities. In June of this year, Nyasha Milwaukee TV was fortunate enough to have Dr. Alyssa Gayingva be our special guest speaker to shine the light on mental health in the Hmong community. Nyasha Milwaukee is proud to share this part of our program at our Save Me Red Carpet event to those of you who could not attend. In recognition of this month being National Suicide Prevention Month, let's go and listen on what she has to say about the state of mental health in our Hmong community. Back in 1998, I was a clinical psychologist student. I was a graduate student studying for clinical psychology. Living in a small city in the Central Valley of California called Fresno. Now Fresno is also home to a large Hmong community. And from the period of 1998 to 2001, according to the local newspaper, there had been a string of Hmong suicides among the youth. Eight Hmong youth had died by suicide from 1998 to 2001. Four of those individuals died within a time span of six months. When I read about that, I was devastated. I was heartbroken and I was overwhelmed. What made it even more devastating was that one of those eight who died by suicide was a cousin of mine. But we didn't talk about it in our family. And I continued to grapple with some of the emotions that I experienced and with the lack of conversation around his death. I had so many questions. Could, did, were there any signs? Could we have done something? Why aren't we talking about it? But even though I had finished my graduate study in clinical psychology, studying mental health issues, I could not, did not know how to approach my uncle. I did not know how to begin that conversation for fear of offending him. And even though he knew that I was studying this field, he did not approach me. Yet I was still left with these emotions of overwhelming hurt and heartbrokenness. So I did the next best thing. I talked to my dad. And I asked him many questions, many of those pressing questions, including why aren't we talking about it? And my father replied, <laughs> We, the Hmong people, believe that perhaps it was his fate, that it was his mandate in life, and that it was his fate to die by suicide at an early age. And we accept that. I couldn't accept that answer, so I pressed on. And I wondered, I wondered, how is this family coping? How are his nuclear family coping with this loss of a son? of a brother. And my dad said to me, well, the family did conduct a traditional ceremony to prevent this from happening to their family again. That is enough. Now, in the Hmong culture, when someone dies by suicide, many Hmong believe that that person's soul cannot cross into the world of the spirits to reunite with their ancestors. They're merely stuck at the gates and cannot cross over, marked by their method of suicide. A noose around their neck if they hung themselves. Foaming at the mouth if they took some sort of poison. And that the only way that they can transcend 
into the world of their ancestors or cross over to the world of their ancestors is if the soul of another living individual, if someone else in the living world died by suicide, then that person's soul will replace the previous person's soul. And so the Hmong will conduct a traditional ceremony to prevent that from happening to the same family. So that they ask a relative to come and rebuke that deceased person's spirit from coming back. Even that response was not enough for me. I was not satisfied. Because in my Western mental health training, individualistic mind, I believe that suicide is preventable. And I believe that we could have done more. And one life lost was already too many lives lost, and I grieved for the deceased. Now, data statistics show that globally, one person dies by suicide every 40 seconds. That means that in the time that I've come up here and talked to you, eight people have died by suicide. And that for every person who dies by suicide, 40 people have attempted suicide. So in the time that I've come here, up here to talk to you guys, eight individuals have died by suicide and 160 people have attempted suicide. Moreover, in the United States, suicide is the second leading cause of death for individuals ages 10 to 34. Now, we don't have a lot of data on the Hmong community and suicide, but what we do have, which is limited, estimates that Hmong youths ages 18 to 25 are four times more likely to have suicidal ideation than the general public. Broadly speaking, for those individuals who've died by suicide, 90% suffer from a mental illness, and that the most common mental illness is depression. And so depression becomes a risk factor for suicide. Yet we know that depression and all other kinds of mental illness are very much a stigma in many communities especially in our Hmong community. In a clinical population, in a research that looked at clinical populations on uh, Southeast Asians, which includes the Hmong, the Vietnamese, the Cambodians, and the Laotians, what they found was that major depressive disorder was the most diagnosed condition for our Southeast Asian populations. 80% of the Hmong are diagnosed with a major depressive disorder, more than their, their Southeast Asian counterparts. The Cambodians came at 70%, and the Vietnamese and Laotians came at around 50%. Research also shows that 33% of our Hmong population suffer from a mental health disorder, compared to 18% of the general population. Yet research further shows that we are underutilizing mental health services. Now, perhaps the reason for that is because we conceptualize health and healing in ways that Western American culture do not. We believe that when a person is not well, it is because of a physical health condition or because of spiritual suffering. So, for example, for um, a condition that we might consider to be a major depressive disorder, perhaps the individual is feeling sad, hopeless, not sleeping well, their sleep is disturbed, their appetite is disturbed, maybe they're hearing voices, maybe they're just solely, socially isolated, socially withdrawn. For those types of symptoms in the Hmong culture, we might think maybe there's something wrong with their body. Maybe there's something wrong physically with them. So we seek a medical doctor for that. Or we might believe that that person has had some sort of spiritual suffering. So we seek a spiritual healer or a shaman for that. Now, the Hmong people do have other uh, factors contributing to our mental health, and that is what we call gay nyoshia, right? Gay nyoshia, when we talk about that, we often attribute it to psychosocial stressors, life stressors, the pressures from life, marital problems, family issues, pressure from school, financial difficulties, friend problems, right? And for all of those psychosocial stressors, we may find the strategies in the Hmong community traditionally to be, don't think about it. 
Right? Go out. Forget about it. Find a distraction. Oh, Suffer and endure. Pain among. This perhaps is my fate, my mandate in life. La shi just live a good life and hope that the next life will be a better life. And that's typically how we cope with or stress or depression. And yes, that may work for many people, but what about when it doesn't work for a lot of people? What about when it becomes so severe that they are not functional anymore? When that time comes, we tend to stigmatize it. Calling that person, oh, nang vu, nang siya lula. That is someone who's crazy, who's mentally unstable. And when we begin to stigmatize mental illness, it becomes quite problematic. But what we know is for those who've suffered from a mental illness is that that emotional pain is real. It is very real, so real that it becomes an emotional pain that begins to affect, to compromise our mental capacity. And we know that no one chooses this kind of emotional, psychological pain. But how do you, we begin to think about it differently? I believe that if we begin to think about mental illness as an illness, as a condition, as a disease, much like asthma or gout, or diabetes, we may begin to uh, make it less stigmatizing. And when that happens, we may have more people who are more willing, more apt to seek services. So my hope is that we can begin to destigmatize mental illness so that individuals will be more likely to go out there and access help because we know that there is help. We know that there are ways to help individuals navigate that. So that when we begin to stigmatize mental illness, and for people who are hurting, that they may seek help. And that when they seek help, they will have hope. And that when they have hope, there will be healing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Fang, for the important work that you do and also giving us more knowledge about our mental health in our community. We applaud your successes and wish the best for your future work. If you need assistance or would like to contact Dr. Vang, her private practice office is called AKV Psychological and Consulting Services, LLC. For more information, please visit akvpsychservices.com or call 651-283-3794. Stay with us, we'll be right back to showcase the Minority Health Film Festival event at the Oriental Theater featuring our production of Save Me as the opening film. Asian Fusion, 1609 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Traditional and authentic cuisine. Seasoned with fresh herbs and spices. Experienced trained specialty chefs. Asian Fusion, 1609 East North Avenue, Milwaukee. Welcome back. Notre Milwaukee is honored that our very own production film, Save Me, was selected as the opening show for the Minority Health Film Festival at Oriental Theater in Milwaukee. The film Save Me is a drama film to shine the light on mental health in the Hmong community. 
It started first as a stage play written by Mai Zhuo Wang and screenplayed by UW Milwaukee and Hmong American Peace Academy students. Let's go see how the event went and what people had to say. Thanks, Milia. We're here at the Oriental Theater for the Minority Health Film Festival featuring the film Save Me. Guests are now starting to come in, so let's go see what they're up to. So, Chani, can you tell us how did you hear about this film? Well, uh, in the community, I've heard a lot of uh, good reviews and, uh, and also information from some of the students about the Save Me. Nice to meet you, Charlie. So how did you hear about the film Save Me? So my friend Paige here, is, uh, she does occupational therapy at uni, so um, she brought me along here and uh, I experienced this kind of film and it was really, really good. I have the pleasure of interviewing Mayor Tom Barrett. Welcome. It's great to be here with you. I would just like to say, you know, what are your thoughts and expectations coming to see this film, Save Me? Well, for me, it's going to be, I think, an educational experience to see this film and to see, obviously, a film that centers on the Hmong society uh, and the health issues that are faced here. And I can learn a lot, I think, by examining and, and being entertained at the same time uh, about the challenges that people face in their everyday lives. Uh, my name is Alfredo Serrato, and uh, I work for the Center for Health Enhancement System Studies out of the University of Wisconsin. And uh, I'm one of the panelists here, and I'm excited to be here. Uh, it's an exciting night, so uh, I can't wait to get everybody's reaction. Dr. Alyssa, what is your thoughts on the Hmong community and mental health? Well, what research has shown is that the Hmong community is at greater risk for mental health disorders than other, um, other ethnic groups. For example, just uh, compared to the general population, the Hmong are, 33% of the Hmong have a mental health disorder versus 18% of the general population. And then when you look at a clinical population of Southeast Asians, the Hmong, 80% of the Hmong people who seek mental health services are diagnosed with a major depressive disorder compared to the Laotians, the Vietnamese, or the Cambodians. So uh, definitely the research is showing that there are great concerns about the mental health of our Hmong community. Walter, so I know we've done this before at the red carpet event, yes. but definitely a different audience. Uh, why do you think it's important for people to see this film Save Me? I think it's important because it does two things. Uh, one, it gives us uh, a look at a, a diversity of cultures. We're at the Minority Film Festival, and all of our different cultures have challenges with mental health and mental illness, and so we got to see it from a cultural perspective, and at the same time to see that all of our families and cultures have some unique similarities. The uh, main character talked about being loved, wanting to be supported, and that's universal. So I thought it was great for both those reasons. So this is my Zhong. So my Zhong, why do you think it was important for the Minority Health Film Festival to feature Save Me at the Oriental Theater? Well, I think this is very, very important. I work for the Department of Health Services, and I've been trying to get the conversation on mental health going for the last decade and a half. And so tonight, I'm very proud to see that this is here, and um, this is a crucial tool for the community to have a dialogue on the subject of mental health. So Heidi, well, thank you for being here. Yes, absolutely. So why do you think it was important for the Minority Health Film Festival to feature the film Save Me? So do you have like 50 minutes? Because there are many important reasons. Wow. <laughs> so, um, but I'll give you a few. Um, one, Save Me, in the Minority Health Film Festival, Save Me is the only film that was made here. 
So made here, you know, the actors, everyone, local. So um, that was important. It's also the opening film for the Minority Health Film Festival, which um, for us really meant we wanted to make a statement. I think so often when we think about minority and just the word minority, um, many times when it comes to the Hmong community, it's almost left out or it's like a second thought. And so we wanted to really demonstrate that no, there's this whole group and it includes the Hmong community and especially here in Wisconsin, the Hmong community is so important. The Save Me film has come to an end at the Minority Health Film Festival. We had a great attendance and a positive reaction from the audience. So this is us coming to an end. Back to you, Malia. The Minority Health Film Festival was sponsored by Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin. Inspired by health-related conversations happening across the nation, the Minority Health Film Festival was created by Freighter to extend those conversations in Milwaukee communities. The first of its kind in the country, the four-day event features unique film selections, community forums, and an interactive health fair, all related to information about the health statuses of racial ethnic minority populations. Nyocha Milwaukee TV would like to thank Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin for this opportunity to highlight mental health in our community. We also like to thank all attendees, panelists, and all of our sponsors for their support towards this event. Most things in life come with a price. And it's one that you're willing to pay. But you'd never say, it costs too little. Which is why we offer straightforward options for your everyday financial needs with better rates and lower fees so you have more money for the things that really matter. Landmark Credit Union, you're worth more here. As we wrap up our show, we would like to remind you to get your traditional Hmong wardrobe ready. In less than three months, the Milwaukee Hmong New Year will be an event you will not want to miss. It will be held on December 7th and 8th this year, again at the Wisconsin Exposition Center at State Fair Park. So mark your calendar to come help the Hmong community bring in the new year through culture, music, dance, great food, and amazing entertainment. We would also like to congratulate Mainza Tao for being selected as Assistant Deputy Director of the Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority, also known as WIDA. Tao was selected by Governor Tony Evers through her strength and engagement in local, state, and national communities, and also her tremendous contributions to the Wisconsin Hmong Chamber of Commerce. Also, a big congratulations to Peter Chu Tao. Peter was also appointed by Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers to the Wisconsin Mental Health Council. Peter worked for the La Crosse Area Hmong Mutual Assistance Association, Inc., and the Wisconsin United Coalition of Mutual Assistance Association for over the last two decades. Nyasha Milwaukee TV wish them both the best in their future career. We appreciate your time for joining our September edition of Nyajong Milwaukee TV, the first over the year Hmong television show in southeastern Wisconsin on WMLW The M. Follow and like us on Facebook and Instagram at Nyajong Milwaukee TV and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nyajong MKE. Before we say goodbye, we'd like to leave you with this message. Never stop doing little things for others. Sometimes those things occupy the biggest part of their hearts. Until next time, may our community be blessed and inspired.